I'm being stupid because I know where you will all go. I know where all students go as soon as they leave the class. And in fact, sometimes when they're in the class, because you will all go wherever you are, here. You know, I found something very interesting about Ukrainian students. Very interesting. It's that uh, Ukrainian students, there's a special dictionary that lots of my students use. Uh, it's quite weird because it only works properly when their phones are hidden below the desk. <laughs> and it's, it's really quite strange. You know, they, they, it, it, I think this dictionary is really motivating because they start, even the students who tell me, I hate writing, Michael, I never write anything, yes? They write, they send, this dictionary, it replies almost immediately. And it makes them, usually it makes them laugh. <laughs> and then they want to send another reply. And I only know it's a dictionary because when I say, what are you doing on your phone, they say, looking up a word. <laughs> I'm looking up a word. I'm looking up a word. In my dictionary. In my dictionary. There's, you know, when I go around, I think it's amazing. That dictionary, it looks a bit like Instagram or Facebook. But okay, let it be, let it be. We don't talk about these words. But I know, just like me, they always have this next to them. If I asked you to now, what time is it? Some of you, some, would do this. But most of you would do this. You would look at your phone. It's normal. Children, adults, everybody is here. So, if we're going to connect with our students, this is the place we need to connect in. And that's where my English lab comes from. So what is my English lab is the big question. Well, actually what it is, it's an incredibly powerful machine that only works when we drill into your brains. Not quite. Actually what it is, is, oh my god, it's even worse. What it is, is just a lot of words on a screen. Oh, interactive, online, duh, of course it's online, it's on the internet. Interactive, well, okay, anything here can be interactive nowadays. Why flexible though? Well, if you're a teacher, you are not controlled by the technology. The technology is controlled by you, because you are the experts. You are the people who are running the class and the course. So, the system does exactly what you tell it to do. Why does it inform? Well, you know. I've been teaching for a long time, and I often find myself starting my lesson with the same question. Maybe you know this question. The question is, have you done your homework? It's very interesting. I, I went, I've been in 11 countries. I was thinking about the percentages. And I thought, okay, when I ask this question, I don't know the answer, but I know more or less that 20% at most of my students will say yes. 20% at least, maybe 30% will say, what's that on the floor? <laughs> Maybe 5% will try, I'm just going to go down and like this, yes. 10% uh, poker face. <laughs> I did it, I didn't do it, you judge, you judge, yes. You know. and, and the really clever ones, 15% they say, they, they think what homework, but they never say this, right? <laughs> what they say is, ah, I wasn't in the last lesson, I was absent. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You know, how can I fight this logic? Uh, you gave the homework in the last lesson. I was absent. Ergo, I didn't have any homework. <laughs> beat, beat this logic. Yes? And, and if they were in the last lesson, then something terrible happened to their workbook. <laughs> the mashrutka! I left it on the seat. It drove away. I'll never see it again. The dog! The dog ate my homework. Oh, Michael, believe me, I spent one hour doing my homework and then it's on my kitchen table. Oh, what a yes. Well, if you're a teacher, it means with my English lab, you know whether your students have done their homework or not. You know how long your students took on their homework, and you know the problems that your students had with their homework. Why does it enrich learning. I asked you a question before, is it possible to motivate students to do homework? And you said, no, what are you talking about? What is this craziness? Well, you know, I took 600 students, 
first-year students from another national university in Kiev. And we did a pilot program with my English lab. And we studied them from the beginning to the end. What we found is that some students who hated homework, they still didn't do much extra homework. But when we took the average, we found that they spent five times longer on their homework at the end than they were at the beginning. And we asked them why, what's happening, what's going on? Did somebody give you money to do this? What's going on, what's happening? What's... And they said, well, you know, with my English lab, I didn't have to carry a paper book around. I had my homework here, or I had my homework here. And they said, well, you know, little things, Michael, I was waiting for my friend, and my friend was 10 minutes late. And I thought, oh, okay, I might as well try the homework. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I said flexible before. Why is it flexible? Well, the teachers can decide how many attempts you can have at your homework. Whether you get, because you know one frustrating thing about homework is you do it, and it's like a test, right? You do it, if you know the answer and it's very easy, it's a waste of your time, because I know everything. If you don't know the answer, you have to wait. You have to wait a week, two weeks, two days, three days, before the teacher comes back and gives you the answers. With my English lab, if the teacher, because remember the teachers control everything, if the teachers set up the system to give you more than one try and feedback, 76%. Students, are you happy with 76%? No. If you are, I'm happy. That's it. I did my homework. If you're not, okay. I know all of the ones I got correct. I know where my mistakes are. I have some teaching, some advice to help me with the mistake. Okay, okay, one more time. Okay, one more time. 85%. Are you happy with 85%? Because no. your friend's still five minutes away. Mm -hmm. your, friends, your friends just got off the metro at Palazzo Crena. They're going to be, oh, okay. Well, if you push me and it's right here at my fingertips, 96%. Maybe your teacher gave you three attempts. Your teacher can see your first score and your last score. And without realising it, you did spend longer on your homework. But it wasn't a waste of time because you were getting help and advice and it was all here on your phone, or on your tablet. And that's why students told us when we researched this that they spent more time doing their homework. Because they said, why not? They weren't, I'm not going to lie to you, they weren't all skipping into the bright new world of homework <laughs> utopia, yes? You know? But for them, it's, well, I want to improve my English, and now I can do it easily. And that's why, since my English lab came out about 10 years ago in an American university, it's used in over 190 countries and by people who speak more than 180 languages. So, maybe you're using one of these books. Uh -huh, some of you are using this. Well, how does it work? Well, what happens at first is you get the book, and inside the book there is... A scratch code. The scratch code gives you access to My English Lab. And my English Lab is an online platform, not an app, it's an online platform. And inside this online platform, there are over 250 products. Books, supplementary, placement testing, progress testing, everything is inside this one house. And just like a house, if you want to enter through the front door, you only need one key. So even if you had all 250 products, you only ever need one username, one password. Let's see what it looks like. I said here we have a book, we have My English Lab. When we open up My English Lab, we see this. If you want your students to only do module one, and not to see module two, module three, module four, module five of the units, you just click here, and it's all hidden. What do we have here? Well, you know one great thing, because I'm showing you through only speak out at the moment. One great thing about Pearson, because we are the world's biggest education company, we have lots and lots of partnerships. One partnership we have is with the BBC. 
So because of our partnership with the BBC, we don't just pay BBC a little money and say, please give us three minutes of, of a news program. We have access to the whole BBC library. So we choose the programs that fit the unit perfectly. And then, when you're at home, when you're on the Mashrutka, when you're in McDonald's, if you want, you can watch extra videos. But everything comes with activities. You're not just watching the video for the sake of watching the video. You also have the materials to go with it. Do you like tests? Oh, you know, the good news for teachers, close your ears, students. If you like tests, you can test your students to death. Death by test. You know, look at this, unit test, achievement test, mid-course test, end-of-course test. The great news is, if you're a teacher, 96% of this is marked by my English lab, not you. The great news is, if you're a student, there's nothing that says your teacher needs to give you all of these tests. And actually, what is a test? Because some tests, like the end of course test, your teacher might say this is very important. We have the timer, and you have one attempt. That's it. But when it comes to something like an achievement test or a unit test, your teacher could say, I'm going to give you two attempts at this test, or three attempts at this test, or four attempts at this test. Because I want you to think back about what you've learned in this unit and what you still don't know, and to practice this. Tests, 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 you know. I think about, for example, speaking tests. How do teachers usually do speaking tests? You know, there are two ways. If I wanted to do a speaking test with you all, I could do this, okay? Just talk to your partner, and we'll come round. Eight, I don't know. Uh, here, up here, up here. Uh, 